Hi, this is Chet Rehal. I have a very special guest with me today. Dr. Craig Cole is director of the section of aerospace medicine here at Mayo Clinic. Craig, welcome. Thanks. Hi, Chet. Great to have you here today. Let me ask you, how did you get into this line of work? Or what are the qualifications to be a specialist in aerospace medicine? Well, I'm a, it started back, oh, probably about 15 years ago. I'm a pilot myself. Um, I'm trained as a pulmonologist, and so I've done a lot of research in altitude physiology. And uh, uh, before I came to Mayo Clinic, I did flight physicals. And uh, ultimately, it involved the, the qualifications involved uh, being designated by the regional flight surgeon uh, in your particular area of the FAA, and then going for a training course and passing the examination. So there's an actual exam to. Uh, yeah, to there do. is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So pilots pilots are frequently referred to cardiologists for one problem or another. Can you tell us what you think we in the cardiology community need to know as we see and evaluate these patients? Sure. I think um, one of the misconceptions in the cardiology community is that there's a, a feeling of advocacy, like they, they need to say, gee, I think Joe can fly uh, or, or Frida can fly. And ultimately, the FAA really doesn't care if the cardiologist thinks they can fly or not. The, the, what they're really looking at is what is the diagnosis, what's the prognosis, and the opinion of the cardiologist. Uh, they don't expect them to be an aerospace physiologist or know much about flying at all. That's in within the purview of the forensic examiner, i.e. the, the uh, flight surgeon that's seeing the uh, pilot, and then ultimately the FAA makes the final disposition on that. So I think, again, it's the cardiologist needs to focus on doing what they do best, and that is just make the diagnosis and get that correct and let them know kind of what the prognosis is associated with that. Now, we're often asked by these patients, that uh, if there's any problem with these tests, they're going to lose their license or lose their career. So it does put some pressure on the cardiologist to act as yeah. their advocate, as you've said. So how do we deal with that? Sure, it sure is. And there's a lot of misconceptions, often unnecessarily placed by the pilot. I in fact, you know, a lot of the information that's garnered by pilots is, uh, as we say, hangar talk, uh, where it's not always vetted at the pro uh, appropriate places. So ultimately, I, it's, it's surprising, but a lot of common conditions that the cardiologists face are acceptable for what are called special issuance waivers. Uh, conditions such as atrial fibrillation, uh, even certain forms of cardiomyopathies, um, myocardial infarctions and the like can all be uh, granted special waivers given appropriate testing guided by a flight surgeon. Well, yeah, m I think many of us really don't know that. Now, um, what are the specific things that cardiologists ought to do when, when seeing a pilot? As you just said, we just do our usual routines, come up with a diagnosis and the best therapeutic recommendation. Yeah. Uh, are, is there more pressure on us to do invasive treatments, like, like to yeah. do balloons and stents to try to treat every little bit of ischemia, whereas in another patient we may just treat an aneurysm? Sure. Oftentimes we discuss this with the pilot in that there are uh, certain parts that are forensic in nature and certain parts that are clinical. And so, for instance, um, pilots requiring a class one medical, i.e. like a, a pilot that flies in the left seat in a commercial airliner, uh, have much more scrutiny uh, than, say, a pilot flying on the weekend, and so which would be what was called a class three medical. Um, so uh, in that line, the class one pilot, for instance, that has a stent placed actually needs to have another angiogram done in six months. And obviously, clinically, we would never do that from a yeah. cardiology perspective. But from a forensic perspective, the FAA needs to know that those stents are not, uh, are not clogged or re uh, no restenoses uh, in, in those particular uh, stents. And so there sometimes are uh, requirements for it that w you wouldn't do clinically. But I think they can certainly ask the pilot to ask their flight surgeon and mm -hmm. to let the pilot know that you know they don't intuitively know all of the FAA regulations. What about pacemakers and defibrillators? Um, pacemakers are allowed, um, and in fact, of course, they do need a good pacer interrogation. Uh, defibrillators are not allowed. Now, interestingly, in another area is in commercial driving, defibrillators are allowed in those groups. So it becomes particularly confusing, I know, to the cardiologists out there. But again, it's, it's, it's being familiar on the, on the pilot side anyway that, that they do not allow certification for defibrillators. And what about healthy asymptomatic pilots? Must they undergo comprehensive stress testing or echoes or other cardiac testing? 
answer. Um, for the most part, it's never an issue. Um, I often get a question about uh, hypertension. Is that a problem? Hypertension should be treated, and uh, none of the newer or most common medications prescribed for hypertension are disqualifying. So I don't think pilots need to worry in that regard. Um, one of the things that we always get into is the coronary calcification scan. If there is coronary calcium identified in a younger pilot, the FAA does expect that there's at least an electrocardiogram or some basic evaluation done to make sure that they don't have significant cardiovascular disease. But not necessarily an angiogram. Correct. Uh, it's in many times just a functional study is, is plenty adequate. Now, if a cardiologist is interested in learning more about this, potentially even getting certification so they can act as a resource in their local area, how would they go about that? Sure. Um, be it, uh, I think the easiest thing is online at FAA.gov. Uh, there's a, a, a phenomenal resource there by the FAA itself, and which includes the actual examiner's guidebook, uh, which has all of the certif uh, certifying or non-certifying e conditions, um, and are, or if they get familiar with who their local flight surgeons are in the area, there's a list of that as well. My guest today has been Dr. Clay Cole, section head of the uh, aerospace section here at Mayo Clinic. Clay, this has been very, very informative. I thank you for your time, and I hope all of you out there uh, found it as informative as I did. Thank you. Thanks a lot for having me.